You guys, there's only three things I know in life, okay? One, a pinky promise matters. Two, a Mississippi count is a valid measurement of time. And three, the new relinquished monster is just relinquished to an upside down. <laughs> Messaging me about the new Relinquish monster because you know, you know, Relinquish is uh, one of, if not my favorite Yu Gi Oh! monster of all time. It really is. I mean, I'm a big fan of Pegasus from the show. I mean, that's just the most nostalgic crap to me. I just love Pegasus, love the original anime, and I love Relinquish, obviously. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I didn't want to do a video on this card. This card actually triggered me, but not in the way you think. I mean, I'm not triggered from the art being upside down, although I do think it's hilarious. I do think that it's really funny that when Konami copies and pastes their own art and they think that no one's gonna notice, but everyone knows. But this new Relinquish did give me the motivation to make this video, so I guess something good did come out of it. I don't know. Maybe this card will be good and we're just kind of talking crap about it. I don't know. We never know what's going to be good to win, guys. Let's be real. So in this video, guys, where I guess we're going to talk about the new Relinquish monster a little bit. I mean, because I already talked about it just now. But we're also just going to be talking about the Link mechanic and the Column mechanic in general. Because I really have a lot of things to say about it. I need to speak my piece today, guys. I really do. And I feel like I need to speak my piece because I really genuinely feel like the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! might be in danger. I mean, I may be exaggerating here, I might be exaggerating, and I'm also going to explain why I think I might be exaggerating, but really quick guys, before we get into that main topic of the video and then open up some fan mail, I have to give a huge shout out to all my patrons. Thank you guys all, once again, just so much. I know I thank you guys all the time, but I cannot thank you enough. I guess I'm just going to spend all my time thanking you. <laughs> That's completely fine. You guys are just absolutely amazing. If you guys keep supporting me and keep watching my videos, I promise I'll keep making them. You guys are just the best. You seriously are the best. And of course, as usual, the other shout out is to our sponsor metamats.com made by us designed by you if you guys want 10% off of any map from metamats.com then enter in the code Eugene versus Jesus and you will get 10% off of any mat but now with those shout outs out of the way guys let's go ahead and move over to the card wall and talk about link monsters and possibly the future of Yu-Gi-Oh all right so I'm gonna start this discussion off by saying that I've talked about this on the channel before I've spoken my piece about not wanting the column mechanic to become like this main thing in Yu-Gi-Oh in other words I think it's really dumb that it matters so much where you put your cards. That's never been, a, you know, an important factor in playing Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, throughout all these years, and it's really lame that they've made it one now, or they're trying to make it into one now. I mean, not Link Monsters. Now, I'm not talking about Link Monsters and, like, Link Arrows and only opening up those extra deck zones for extra deck monsters. That was actually a great idea, and I like the Link mechanic just fine, so I want to be clear there. I'm not one of these, like, super old-school players that's like, oh, no, you know, Cyber Dragon and Links and Synchros, everything ruins Yu-Gi-Oh! No. I'm, I'm not one of those people, guys. I sympathize with those people, don't get me wrong. I really do, because I'm an old-school player as well, and I like playing old Yu-Gi-Oh! You guys know I not only play modern, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, you know, our current ban list format, but I also play plenty of other Yu-Gi-Oh! formats. You guys all know that. This is the funnest channel on Yu-Gi-Oh! All that I'm saying, and all that I have said in the past, is that having to be super particular about where your cards go is, is just really stupid to me, and that's just me speaking my piece on that. What I'm getting at here, and I'm sure other people have talked about this as well, but, um, it's very noticeable, and I, I see it all the time when I'm playing Heralds especially, that I have the same kind of habits of where I put monsters and stuff like that. So uh, that being the case, I mean, it's like that with any Yu-Gi-Oh deck. You get in your habits, and especially with Link monsters now, you really have to, you know, really be conscious about where you put your monsters and all that, and because of that, you get into these habits. And that's where the problem lies, guys. That's where the problem lies. And I mean, th this could be, you know, an extra strategy in the game, and that, that is kind of cool. My point here is, since we have those habits, and we have like just the general urge to form habits and stuff like that these cards like you know broken line and the new relinquished monster and stuff just pick just pick your card that makes columns or where you put a card matter just pick your card here guys that creates a huge problem in Yu-Gi-Oh because if you know your opponent's habits and you watch what they do you can totally and absolutely take advantage of that and once again that could be just this extra strategy you know that's intentional you know that's intentionally being put into the game and that's completely fine and I do appreciate that extra level of strategy to an extent, but at the same time though, like I was speaking my piece earlier, for the most part, I just think that it's really stupid and just kind of like asinine. I just think it's really kind of dumb to have to keep up with your cards that much, not to mention, it really opens you up and it opens up the game in general to, you know, hardcore nitpickers and rule sharks and stuff like that, so to me, that's just another reason why the whole thing should just be thrown out in general, but that is just my opinion here, but that's not going to be the whole subject of this video, guys, so moving on here. Speaking of the column mechanic and cards like Broken Line, I 
wanted to point out one of my observations here, and maybe you guys have made this kind of observation as well, or maybe it's just completely obvious and I'm just kind of stating it for no reason, I don't know. But something that I've noticed, um, you know, just recently, is that um, the whole column mechanic requiring your opponent to have a monster in a certain place, or, you know, two like two things in a column, you know, like a spell and then a like monster. As we've seen with Mech Knights and other cards, you guys get where I'm coming from here. I feel like that is like the new activation requirement. In, in other words, I feel like, you know, if your opponent controls a monster in this zone, or you has two or, or if two you know monsters occupy this column this happens that's like the new activation requirement that's like the new how do I put this that's the new when your opponent's monster declares an attack that's the new discard one card that's the new um, I don't know there's different ways to go about this that's the new when your opponent summons a monster you know something happens these new cards that we've been getting in this link era as well as you know of course link monsters themselves really have been having a huge impact on how I've been thinking about the game they really have been and and um, they're making me notice that the game really has been changing. Uh, ever since Code of the Duelist, and maybe even a little bit before, it really genuinely starts to feel like Konami did push some sort of soft reset button on the game. And um, it's not that that's a bad thing, it's actually a good thing, but um, I want to speak my piece mainly about, you know, being so particular and opening um, up everybody, just opening up the game to rule sharking and to just overcomplication in general. And that's really going to be my point in, the, in this video, guys. If the combo mechanic becomes so super prevalent. I mean, more prevalent than it is currently with Mech Knights and stuff, right? It becomes, if it becomes super prevalent to the point to where what is meta is super um, situational conditions, revol you know, revolving around, you know, the column mechanic and where monsters move and stuff, that will end Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, how else can I explain this? In other words, just how we have super situational cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Probably some behind me on the wall where they require, you know, your opponent to do a million different things before they can flip over. Those kind of cards we've acknowledged to be really bad and no one ever really plays them, right? Like, for example, if would you play a, a card like Solemn Strike that just negates a summon, you know, just negates a summon straight by paying 1,500 life points, or would you play, you know, some other card that says, well, when your opponent does this and this and this and this, you could pay 1,500 life points to do the same thing as Solemn Strike. You, you would just play the Solemn Strike. That's kind of, I don't know how else to word this. It's kind of what I'm getting at here. But if those mega situational and conditional cards and game aspects become relevant and a part of our everyday metagame, it will be the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! And if the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh! and everything else keep getting more and more complicated and you have to really pay attention to every little thing that you do, more so than you do already, which is already a shit ton, okay? It's already a shit ton of watching yourself. Yu-Gi-Oh! really is already way too much watching yourself. If the game keeps progressing how it has been the past few years, and it really has accelerated just the past few years, if this keeps occurring, it will be the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! And the reason why is because if only adults can comprehend the game, then there's no new blood coming into Yu-Gi-Oh! at all. At all. I truly do think and feel that way, kind of, because when I think about me being, you know, 10 or 11 years old, you know, trying to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff, if Yu-Gi-Oh! was how it is today, back then, there would be no Yu-Gi-Oh! No, no. There would be no me sitting here talking to you guys right now. I mean, because if you think about it, if it was this complicated, I would have been like, man, I, I already knew that this was dorky. I didn't know that I was getting into all this crap, too. I never would have started playing, you know what I mean? We all started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! At, at a young age because we really liked the cards and the anime, and we just understood the simplicity of the game and wanted to play. So I don't feel like it's that hard to understand that when you overcomplicate a game like Yu-Gi-Oh! or any card game, when you make it to a point of complication to where only adults can play it, you alienate an entire fan base that is your future. It's the future of the game. And that's my point, guys. Um, if that is what Konami is aiming for, and they're aiming to make a more competitive game, and that's what all this is pushing towards, then that is fine. If, that, if that's the goal, then th that is their decision as a company, period. That is their decision that's the direction that they're taking the game in and there's nothing we can do about it right and that is just fine but what I'm saying here is and what I'm getting at is that if Konami hasn't noticed that they're alienating their player base and their younger player base this is me telling them this is me telling them right now like cool it a little bit you know what I mean just just slow your roll a little bit I mean you can still come out with new cards we like getting new cards we really do for the most part I mean I like getting new cards I don't like getting 50 new archetypes at once when only one of them is good you know what I mean but I feel like everybody kind of has those frustrations in Yu-Gi-Oh you know it's just Yu-Gi-Oh but what I'm getting at here is that if Yu-Gi-Oh is going to continue it needs to stay fun. It needs to stay fun. It has to stay fun to continue, guys, because if everybody is super try-hard and super toxic about the game, then it's over. 
it's over, it's done, and it will be just this high-end, elitist, collector's markets, just cash grabby, you, you get the picture. It completely ruins and, and honestly just rapes and just destroys the game that we love. And uh, that's kind of where, where I'm going with this. But I might be exaggerating, guys. This might be just kind of like the new thing that's going on and then, you know, whenever the next mechanic comes out, it's something else. Um, my point, though, is I just don't want, I don't want to see this game die because I love it and it's, it's super fun and I love entertaining you guys I love making videos I love what I do and I love playing Yu-Gi-Oh and following that up and going off of what I said earlier this might just be like the new thing you know this might be like the new uh, activation requirement like I was saying earlier the new you know when your opponent's monster is summoned or declares an attack you know it's like the new thing like that where it's gonna be a part of our game more and that is also just fine and I like you know cards like broken line and stuff like that but when you make them like over complicated to the point to where they're situational that's where it starts to suck but it only sucks if can Konami makes that meta. You can, they can make, they can make, you know, overcomplicated situational cards when it comes to the column mechanic, and they can spit those cards out all they want. We all know it wouldn't matter unless they make it meta. Unless it becomes a part of our everyday Yu-Gi-Oh lives, then it's a problem. Because like all these other cards that are probably behind it that you guys might see, I don't know, maybe there's none of them up here that I could use as an example, I don't know. But just like these cards, guys, they can be situational. These, these new proposed cards can be situational as long as they're not meta. I mean, they can come out with all these cards, you know, and it won't matter if we're not playing them if they're, they're not directly impacting our game it's not gonna matter but my point is if uh, the column mechanic and everything reaches a point of complication to the point to where you know like I was saying earlier only adults can understand the game and only adults can really play the game and stuff it's going to really ruin Yu-Gi-Oh. It will be the end of Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. It really honestly will be, and, and it's just it's just simple. It's just simple. If you don't have any new players coming into the game, and you're just stuck with the old players, I mean, everyone dies, right? Like, or everyone, you know, changes hobbies or ch and changes interests and stuff. It doesn't, they don't necessarily have to die, you know what I mean? But they'll change your hobbies and interests, you know? So uh, that being said, if you don't have any new blood coming into the game, like what the, what new players do you have coming and buying your product? Uh, I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to word this, guys. I don't, I, mean, I think I explained it pretty well. I think I got to my points pretty well, but I don't know, man. I, maybe I could have explained it a little better. But like I said a minute ago, guys, I might be blowing this way out of proportion. I really might be. Um, either way, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section because this is kind of important stuff. I mean, because it appears that the column mechanic really is becoming more and more prevalent. So I think we need to keep an eye on that. I really do. I think we need to keep an eye on that as players. Not, not, and not just as players, you know, trying to learn and play the game further. But we also need to keep an eye on that mechanic because it's the future of the game. And we need to, you know, keep an eye on that as players too, you know what I mean? But I feel better now, guys. I've spoken my piece about it. I kind of made you guys aware of it, you know, some of the things or at least, you know, kind of let you know what was going on in my head to kind of get the ideas out there. So I feel better about it. Um, go ahead and let me know once again what you guys think down in the comment section. But until next time, let's go ahead and get into some fan mail. All right, this next one is from nobody. So, and I can show this, this is my address, <laughs> but um, yeah, that's really odd that there's like no name on it, but let's see if they put their name in their, in their letter or something like that. Let's see what all this is. So there's a letter, some cards, lots of cards. What is all this? A ton of cards. They just, they just don't stop coming out of there. That's, that's all of it though. Let's see what my instructions are. What is, what is all this? Dear Yugi Nono, thanks for signing my Dark Magicians. They look so much cooler. Everything is yours to keep. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I decided to send some some big guys for the binder. Thanks for being awesome. P.S. Good <laughs> goddamn it, Napa. <laughs> Oh, dude, um, actually, that's really funny. Thank you so much for that, uh, by the way. Thank you so much for all this. But um, uh, the, the big guys, though, uh, um, pff, I'm blown away right now. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I, you caught me off guard. Uh, thank you so much for the cards. But um, what, I, what I was trying to get to, um, I actually have something from, now that we're on the subject of the binder, or, um, I have something from Chris Bushka, our fan mail Monday champion. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up really quick. Um, he sent me, he already messaged me when he sent me. He sent me binder pages because, <laughs> because I wasn't clear clear like in my fan mail and stuff because I, I was like man I keep like I, I, I keep saying like you know man I need to put a uh, binder pages in the island of misfit binder but um so uh, Bushka took it upon himself to to send me binder pages but what I meant to say <laughs> what I meant to say is that I just kept forgetting to put in binder pages before I hit record <laughs> and I actually uh, put in binder pages before I hit record this time so um, now but now we have um, even more binder pages so 
Mushka, thank you so much for that. Like, this is gonna keep going, uh, which is freaking amazing. Um, uh, you didn't send a letter though. Oh no, I was hoping I'd get to read a letter from you too though, but it's okay, it's okay. Thank you uh, so much for the binder pages. At least, uh, well, that works out actually really great uh, because that that your your what you sent works out with what he sent and gets me on the subject of putting everything in this. So that worked out perfectly. Thank you so 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 much. Um, I would just put all these in here right now if I didn't already kind of load it up <laughs> with more. I actually have like a, it sounds really weird, but um, so I showed you guys like the bread tie trick, you know, what I used to do to keep all these together. I'd put like a bread tie through here and like twist it. But um, now I have like so many binders and stuff. I have like this whole extra binder where I have just like, uh, you know, a few cards, but like mostly, this literally like mostly like 99% just extra sleep pages. So <laughs> like I just have like all the, all this stuff, but dude, thank you so much for the big eyes um, to, to put in here. And also I need to, um, I should probably put in all the stuff. I'm getting way ahead of myself <laughs> well, on this page, not that page. Um, but I should probably uh, start putting in the other stuff from uh, last week and stuff. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that like off camera though. I'll get it all updated for like you know the, the, for next week and all that stuff. But um, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much, dude. Like who said this? Who said this again? Uh, yeah, yeah, you didn't say your name. I didn't think you said your name. I, whoever, oh, God, I'm terrible with names. Do you know how many dark magicians I've signed? That could be anybody. That could be anybody. Who? Who are you? <laughs> Like, oh my gosh. Dude, I've signed, I probably, like, through the duration of Fan Mail Monday, I have no idea how many Dark Magicians I've signed for people, or how many Cyber, oh my gosh. Think of how many Cyber Dragons I've signed for people. Oh my god. I can't even imagine, but dude. Anyways, anyways, thank you, Chris Muska. Thank you, and whoever you are, dude, thank you so much for the cards. Thank you so much for all this, you know, sending, what, what is this one? Actually, I just noticed that this one's in here. What is this? Hey, speaking of Dark Magician, oh my gosh, thank you so much. But dude, um, you know, the, uh, Thank you so much for sending and uh, you just everything. You can thank both of you guys so, so much. Mm.